Well, hello everyone and welcome to Momentum channel. My name is Mo and for those of you who have been following our journey on Momentum Finance channel um, or on Blossom, you know that my wife and I have built a stock market investment portfolio currently sitting just shy of that half a million dollar mark and it mainly consists of low cost index funds. In fact, since um, some of my last updates, latest updates, we have made some adjustments to our portfolio and rather than keeping different um, index funds in our portfolio that provided us exposure to U.S. market, Canadian markets, emerging markets, and international market, we've decided, my wife and I have decided to consolidate things and make things a lot simpler. We've actually switched majority of our holdings into one single ETF, and that is no other than X equity, X -E -Q -T. Now you might be wondering why we did that switch and why not just hold on to the shares that we had of the underlying ETFs separately? That's a great question. And in fact, if we did that, if we hold on to those ETFs separately, at the end of the day, we would have possi possibly ended up paying a slightly uh, lesser of a MER in the grand scheme of things. If you take into account the uh, weighted average of different holdings and their respective uh, MERs. But what made up make that switch was mainly for the sake of simplicity, because then we didn't have to really look after multiple different ETFs and instead we could pour our funds and more savings as we get in into that one single ETF. The other thing, and probably the more important reason for us was the fact that with an only one ETF, such as like XEQT or V equity or uh, the ones uh, similar to those, they come with automatic re rebalancing. Uh, which means every quarter, um, the fund managers are actually going to be rebalancing your holdings accordingly, that one single ETF accordingly, making sure that, you know, the target expected um, allocation to different uh, geographical market sectors are maintained according to what uh, their targets are. X equity consists of these main, four main uh, ETFs as part of it. Around that, as I mentioned, around 46% exposure to the US, uh, to ITOT, you get exposure to XEF around 24%, which gives us exposure to that international market. XIC gives us exposure to the Canadian market and XEC gives us exposure to emerging markets around that 5% mark. If the balance balances of our exposure to different these geographical um, markets changes uh, considerably based on uh, you know, the underlying methodology that X, uh, this X EQT has, they're going to, as part of those rebalancing exercises, they're going to make sure uh, they buy more into the other ones that have lowered in terms of their exposure and try to balance it out according to those weightages that you see here, to so bringing it very closely to those ones. And that's why you can see these weightages may get updated, but at the end of the day, they're going to hover around that same mark. It's not going to be hovering too, too much different from that. And I believe in my perspective, that is one of the main advantages of holding to the executive because we then my wife and I, we don't have to worry about having to do that manually. And the other consideration is sometimes as an individual investor, we might be biased. For example, if we see that the US market is doing so good and I saw it for myself, at one point, my shares of VFE that I had were doing so good. So uh, that made me kind of encouraged to pour more money into VFE and really not sticking to the certain weightage target weightage that I, ha I had or uh, I should have had. That's the risk that I see with uh, having the ability of pick and choose. You might not really follow uh, the, the set target that you have you have set it there in the first place and really get tempted to buy more into certain shares versus the others. With a solution that is only in one ETF, like X equity or V equity, their ex target exposures are already set and they're going to be, be doing that rationally as opposed to emotionally. Uh, that's another key reason uh, that we are going um, with X equity. It is has it has definitely some MER. The MER fee here is at zero point twenty percent. And remember, this is the entire fee that you're you would be paying management expense ratio as part of holding on to the uh, X equity. I've seen some post folks are asking, well, if you hold on to X equity, does that mean that you're already paying the MER for these? underlying ETF, like, you know, XEF has an MER, XIC has an MER, XCC has an MER. Are you paying those first? And then on top of that, you're paying the 0 0.20? No, that's not at all the case. You're only paying the 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 fee that you're seeing here, the 0.20% MER. That's the overall um, MER that you would pay, pay paying as part of owning the X equity. 
why don't we move on and take a quick look at our entire uh, holding. I've built this dashboard through Google Looker Studio. This dashboard is connected to a spreadsheet on Google Spreadsheet that has all of my um, holdings and the number of shares that we have. The reason I've done that is that this shows the entire accounts that my wife and I have. My wife has her shares in two accounts, TFSA and RSP account to her Simple account. I have my shares to Simple, majority of it, but I also have some shares in Questrade for our Smith Maneuver portfolio that my wife and I have. Hence, it would be really tough to showcase them into uh, you know, in one place without having a dashboard that um, like this. And that's why I'm showing you this uh, for, for the time being. Hopefully it, it serves that purpose. And I have added a few things to this dashboard since uh, last time I made a video on it. I've added the total amount of net deposits that my wife and I have made to our investment accounts ever since we started investing. This goes back to your five, five or six or seven years ago. Uh, without it, it would not give us a ton of perspective of how well our accounts have done. And even though our total overall return is positive, 13.6%, uh, personally, I must say, I don't think this is the, uh, a great return. Uh, in fact, a lot of it, I, I, I kind of relate to the fact that when we first started investing, we were just stock picking here and there, right and left. We were trying to pick winning stocks. And honestly, uh, the returns, I think, speaks for themselves. Having this type of return in in a matter of several, several years, like I would say five, six years, I don't think it's very desirable. It's very, very poor performance. Luckily, around the past one year or so, we started uh, improving our approach to investing, more so in investing in low-cost index fund. I expect these numbers to definitely grow. And now that we've actually stabilized our approach to investing through low-cost index fund. At one point, I was kind of, concent kind of uh, contemplating better I want to hold on to my shares of VT and VTI. These are two holdings that we have uh, mainly in my account, in my RSP account, and they are in US dollars. And they are not such a big um, holdings. If you look at it, my shares of VT, which is Vanguard Total World Stock Index Fund, it's an ETF that gives us exposure to the uh, entire world, except for, I believe, it might have some exposure to Canada, but I think it's very minimal. Mostly is US and international markets and emerging markets. Uh, we are uh, only investing around $15,000 or so in market value. It's very minimal uh, value compared to the, our total portfolio size, which is hovering around $483,000. If I were to really sell it and put it in equity, I could, but because it's already in US dollars, if I were to sell it, I had to convert it back to Canadian dollars. Even though I have a Wellsimple premium account, still there would be that uh, conversion fee uh, that a Wellsimple charge, I believe is around 1.5%. I would lose on that. On top of that, any dividends that I would get um, in an RSP account, if it's hold, held into VT or VTI, because they're in US dollar account, I won't have that 15% withholding taxes. Hence, I wanted to take advantage of that. I already had these shares anyway. I didn't want to sell them and I decided to keep them, even though they're a smaller uh, portion of my overall portfolio. As we get more dividends from these ones, those US dollar funds that are collected through dividends, we're going to repurpose them and buy more shares of the VT and VTI. Um, that's the approach that we are taking mostly in our uh, RSP account. For the rest of it, though, you do notice our biggest holding is X equity. We currently have, between my wife and I, over $14,000, 14,000 shares. In fact, we have 14,550 shares, which accounts for about $380,000 uh, worth of investments. Um, X equity, because it's been recently added to our portfolio, we used to have multiple different ETFs. Hence, the performance of it is negative because we bought it almost close to that 52-week high. Right now, Executive and many other shares in the stock market are doing poorly. Currently, we are down by 2.2%, but we are adding to our shares almost on a daily basis here and there. Today, I believe I bought around 25 more shares. Um, yesterday, I bought around another, I think, 30, 40 shares. My wife also bought a few other shares uh, in her accounts. So we're definitely adding to our shares of Executive gradually, but steadily. You do notice that our portfolio also consists of some uh, money sitting in cash. This is not an ETF, it's just true pure cash. And this is the fund that we are using to buy gradually more shares of X equity. For now, I've added it and included it in our overall portfolio size. The main reason is that this cash sits with our, within our brokerage account. It's not a cash that's sitting on an emergency fund or anything like that. That's why I've included it here. Uh, earlier on the onset of the call, I talked to you about the target asset allocation. This is the target asset allocation that we have for our portfolio and holding on to shares of X equity and the VT and VTR on the side allows us to get close, very close to those ones um, momentarily. Right now, our exposure to Canada is higher than 
the target of 20%. Main reason for that is we have around $75,000 sitting in cash. And that's in terms of geographic as, uh, asset allocation, we've at, uh, assigned it to Canada. Once we sell, use that cash to buy more shares of X equity, um, this target asset allocation is going to be more um, streamlined and closer to the target that you see on the screen. I want to also bring to your attention the different MERs, management expense ratio that this portfolio has. Majority of our holdings is in X equity, and it has the highest amount of MER at 0.20%. Following that, we have VT that has only MER of 0.07%, and VTI, look at that, it's just beautiful. Only an MER, MER of 0.03%. Because majority of our holdings currently is at X equity, and based on the amount of dollars that we've invested in these shares, right now, our average MER for portfolio, weighted average for uh, our portfolio is sitting closer to that 0.16%. I believe as we deploy the remaining of the cash and buy more shares of X equity, this is going to come at or very close to 0.20%. For sure, it won't be higher than that because we still have some exposure to VT and VTI, which bring the weighted average cost of our MER lower but it won't be more than 0.20% uh, for sure, which I find it very uh, desirable. I'm totally fine with that uh, kind of fee that we are paying for the sake of making it easy and simple for my wife and I, that we don't have to worry about stock picking or ETF picking or whatnot. I hope you found this video beneficial. The reason I'm sharing these kind of contents with you is not to brag whatsoever. It's just to show you how through uh, financial discipline, a higher saving uh, kind of rate and being deliberate around reaching that goal of financial independence, you can also start your journey um, towards financial independence, financial freedom, and work towards um, building a richer life for you, you and for your family and loved ones. If you are uh, considering opening up a brokerage account and not sure where to start, I highly, highly recommend Wealthsimple. It's super easy to use. They have a Wealthsimple Invest, which is more of a robo-advisor uh, kind of type of accounts. And that's how I initially got started. But over time, as I learned more, I switched to Wealthsimple Trade, which allows um, us and even for my wife to pick and choose, in this case, the ETH high low, co uh, low cost ETFs. But you can also pick and choose stocks if that's something that interests you for that matter. The reason I bring them up is if uh, that's something that interests you and if you want to get started, you could always use the referral links that is provided in the video description. It gives you a chance to... Um, of course, get started super simple, but in the meantime, get some bonus, uh, referral bonus, and it, it's beneficial both to you and to me and supports uh, me and my channel along that way as well. And thank you so much. As always, if you have any question regarding the content of this video or any other questions related to investing in the stock market, leave them uh, in the comment section of the video or share, with, share them with me on Momentum Finance um, on Blossom, and I'm happy to get back to you based on uh, the knowledge that I have and what I've learned over time. Thank you and I hope to see you all next time.